Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do I hauled it, but did I like it? So I have a lot of products. I usually try to keep them to about five products or less just to make this short and sweet for you guys because that's just really what it is. I just want to come back to things that I have hauled and quickly tell you if they were good or if I thought that they were complete crap. But I've been doing a lot of hauls lately and I just have so many things that I want to talk to you guys about at once. So I have about like eight products, maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to try to get through this quickly. So let's just get into it. I want to talk about is these fresh citrus deep cleaning makeup removing wipes um I got these I believe at TJ Maxx um I went on kind of a makeup removing wipe thing because I bought a crap load of them trying to find just makeup remover wipes that I can completely love and just use for the end of time because I'm the kind of person that does that so I like these. They were all right. They're semi-thick, not too thick. They don't have, they don't leave a nasty residue. But the thing that I don't like about them and that I almost cannot get over is the smell. I thought that it would be a fresh citrus smell, but these straight up smell like Mike's Hard Lemonade. And I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's an alcoholic beverage. And it's nasty. It's so freaking gross. And every time I use this to like take off my makeup, I end up feeling sick to my stomach. Like, and then I go and wash my face afterwards anyway because of the smell. And it doesn't linger too long on my skin, but it does straight up smell like alcohol and it's just disgusting. So I will try to use these up just to get them out. I do like the way that they take off my makeup, but the smell is freaking gross. The next thing I want to talk about is this Revlon Two Steps to Total Gel Envy. And I didn't haul this just because I, after I already did one of my hauls, I went to Target and I just picked up this alone. So I couldn't do a haul with just, you know, two nail polishes. So I did want to bring it on here just to let you guys know I did buy it and I want to tell you how I'm feeling about it. Now, I made the mistake of not taking a picture of my manicure once I did my manicure with this. But the thing that I got about it is um, it's supposed to be like a gel manicure, you know? And it is. It is a long wearing nail polish. I mean, you use the diamond top coat and then the regular nail polish. And I was wearing it for almost a week. And it didn't chip. It wasn't starting to wear. It didn't do anything. It stayed in place exactly like a gel manicure. But it wasn't shiny like a gel manicure. It looked like a normal manicure. You know, and I was really expecting that shiny gel kind of look to the nails, and it didn't give that. And I especially thought that with the color stay Gel Envy, like the diamond top coat. I have a diamond top coat, not from Revlon, but I have a diamond top coat, and it makes my nail polish so shiny. This was dull, and I mean, I got a very, very light color. It's called Beginner's Luck. And I got a very light pink shimmery color. I've been trying to find like a dainty light color that just looks good on my nails. And I just can't find that. This was just boring. It was dull. But it did last a long time. So I figure if maybe I get a darker color that I'm used to, that it will be a lot better. You know, and I just don't think I got the right color. And I don't like that it's not very shiny. The next thing I want to talk about is the Becca Resurfacing Primer, and I got this recently in an all cosmetic wholesale and haul, and this is the Line and Pour Minimizing Mattifying Formula. Now, like I said when I hauled this, I got this because I'm looking at primers or looking for primers that not everybody is talking about, because all of those hyped up primers, I have found that, they, yeah, they work, they're nice, but they're just not what I need. So I tried this out. I did see Jackie O talking about a Becca primer that she really, really liked. And I'm not sure if it's this one, but I, I do think that she said it was a mattifying one. So it might be this one. But this I am for sure buying in the full size. This is the best primer I have ever used. It is so matte. It's almost like a white cream kind of consistency but it goes on, it sinks in immediately, and you can feel how matte your face is before you apply anything else. It fills in the lines on my forehead, around my mouth, around my eyes. It fills in pores better than anything I've used, and that's up against the Benefit Professional, the Dr. Brandt that I love, all of that. This is like holy grail status for me, and I have been so excited to talk to you guys about this product. This is 
amazing. I don't know how much the full size is, but you bet your ass I'm looking into it because this, I would cut a bitch for. A cut a bitch for this. The next thing I want to talk about is another product that I got from All Cosmetic Wholesale, and that is the Matte FX. This is the Cover FX Oil Blotting Powder, and it looks like this. It's just like a translucent powder. It's supposed to be mattifying, keeps the oil at bay, and boy, does it do that. This is another product that I would cut someone for, and I'm not kidding. Like, this I cherish, along with that Becca primer. This is the best powder I have ever used in my whole life. I already bought like three backups and they're on their way. I need backups. I need to know that this is never going to be out of my collection. $9.99 on all cosmetic wholesale. You bet your ass I'll buy their whole supply. Like this and it actually goes a little bit fast and I don't know. I think it's because I love it so much. I've been using it every day. The logo is almost wore off from it which you guys probably can't see because of those stupid freaking lights. But I've been using the shit out of this and I don't expect it to last too long like my other powders because I love it that much. The only downfall on this, which is just kind of trivial, trivial, that sounded so weird, trivial. I can't talk ever. I don't know if you guys notice that, but I sound like I'm a garbled. But the only downside is that the packaging gets a little bit dirty, so... Yeah, big deal, right? The next thing that I want to talk about is the ColourPop, and this is their blush. Um, I do have a lot to say about all of it, really, the highlighters and the eyeshadows that I, I got as well, but I did do a get ready with me with those, and I didn't really talk too much about the blush, so I wanted to come on here and talk about the blush. I, you know, everybody just raves about ColourPop. They're very, very affordable, very, very beautiful eyeshadows, very good lipsticks. I mean... They are a really, really great company, and it's nice that they're like $5 or $8 items because we need something that's great and affordable for us people, which is like 90% of YouTube, who can't afford Tom Ford and all that crazy shit. So I, I picked up some of the blushes because I love blush. I'm one of those people that will buy blush and highlighters no matter how many I have. So I got this, and it's very, very pretty. I got this in Get Laid, and I told you guys that's why I picked it up was because it said Get Laid. This is kind of like a coral orangey blush, and I honestly don't know why I got it. Um, I don't care for the color, and I don't like cream blushes, and this is pretty much what this is, is a cream blush, because you cannot use a brush on this. I even tried to use a stippling brush, and it just doesn't come out looking right. It doesn't come out looking even, and I noticed that even as a swatch on my hand, it kind of fills in, like it sinks into like lines and pores and it just looks cakey. So I'm not sure if I'm using it wrong or if there's a different way to apply this, but for the moment, I don't reach for this ever because I just cannot find a way to make it look good on my face. And I need a blush that is like, I can use a brush with. And that's one thing that I don't really care for about ColourPop is that it's not easy to use their products. You know, you have to really do extra work to get them to look good. I do like the eyeshadows just for the basis of a lid color. I don't like them for transition colors. I don't like them for anything that you have to blend out. They are amazing for colors if you just want to use your finger and stick them on your eyelid. They are amazing that way. But any other way, I just find that they're a little bit too much work. And I just end up reaching for everything else before these. The next thing I want to talk about is this NARS Concealer. This is in Vanilla. I got this from All Cosmetic as well. It's a very, very light color, and I got this just so I could have a little bit of brightening underneath my eye. Now, the first thing I did with this is apply it to my eye. It didn't apply very easily. It was almost too dry to apply under my eyes, and I have oily skin, so not many things are very drying on my face ever. And this was so drying that it looked cakey. It wouldn't um, spread out. I couldn't blend it out very well. And it creased and caked up right in the corner of my eyes. And it looked really, really bad. So I found that this is better for like spot treatments. But then again, I got it in such a light color that it just doesn't really look right. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to use this just because it's not really great for under your eyes. I know that their liquid one is and it's amazing and I really want to get that and try it out. But I would not recommend this stick kind of lipstick kind of concealer from NARS for under your eyes because it is horrible. 
The next thing I want to talk about is these LA Girl Matte Lipsticks. They call them their Flat Finish Pigment Glosses. Um, I have been really, really trying these out, and these are somewhat of a new product. Um, not a lot of people are talking about them. I have seen a couple of people that have gotten them sent to them for, like, PR reasons, um, and then I've seen a couple of people that have bought them, but I haven't seen anybody actually review these. Um, the first one that I got, what color are you in, is in Bazaar, and this was the one that I was like really intrigued for because this one is more of a brown color and I didn't realize that when I bought it or I wouldn't have but this is the more pink one and it is so pigmented when I hauled it I told you guys I was very happy with my purchase and I still am but I do um there is a kind of big downfall with these and maybe it is because they're cheap you know so you can't expect much and if you look at it from that perspective of knowing that they're cheap these are amazing you know, and I really, really would recommend everybody grabbing these. But I guess I'm a little bit, um, spoiled with the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. These go on very well. They're very pigmented. They, um, they don't have a smell at all. I told you guys that before. There's no smell to this. Um, the only thing that I didn't notice because I had only swatched it on my hand. When I put these on my lips, they are so tacky. Like, sticky, tacky. And it doesn't go away. It doesn't end up having a matte finish. And it says that it's matte. And I mean, it looks matte, but it's not on your lips. I mean, I literally could stick my lips together like this and not be able to open them. They will stick together like glue is drying on my lips. And I kept this on all day to see if it would kind of flatten itself out and stop being so tacky. And it doesn't. This stays tacky throughout the whole day. And it just doesn't work for me. I love the color. And if I really, really want to, I will wear these. But for the most part, they're, they are definitely going to be something that I kind of never reach for. Just because I have my NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. And they're not tacky. They're very silky. So, uh, boo to the whole tacky shit with these. But the color is amazing. And the last product I want to talk to you guys about is the Pacifica Natural Minerals Stellar Gaze Length and Strength Mineral Mascara. I got this for PR reasons from Pacifica. They send me out things every now and then. And this was in the box. The last time I got something from them, they sent me a palette, this mascara, and two eyeliners. I really like the eyeliners. The palette they had already sent me previously, and I gave that to a friend as a gift. And I kept this, and I wanted to try it out. I love the packaging on it. I think it's so, so pretty. And the wand is huge. The wand is humongous. So this cannot go anywhere near your bottom lashes, or you will have a freaking mess. But I wanted to try it out on my lashes and see how it was. And honestly, it didn't do much of anything. This is just a eh kind of mascara. I was pretty bummed about it just because the packaging was so cool and I really had high hopes for it. I do like a lot of Pacifica stuff, but this was just nothing to bat an eye at, literally. Like, I, I applied it. It did what a normal mascara would do if you're applying anything to your eyelashes. You know, it, they got darker. They got a little bit of length. But for the most part, this did absolutely nothing. But what I liked this for is if I'm going somewhere and I'm not wearing any kind of makeup but I just want a little bit of like mascara on, I will put this on and it makes my lashes a little bit fuller, a little bit longer, but still looks completely natural. So I will get use out of this. It's just, it's nothing spectacular. It's nothing to run out and grab and I don't really think it's worth the price. So that is everything that I wanted to review this week and I hauled it, but did I like it? If you guys have any other questions about anything that I've talked about, leave me a comment. I will get right back to you guys. All the information for everything is down below. I will try to find links for everything as well for you guys. I hope this was useful for you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!